A pair of reports presented to the UN Security Council Thursday were insufficient, particularly with respect to their representation of the suffering being endured by people in Gaza. That, according to Riyad Mansour, who is Palestine's permanent observer at the United Nations. Following Thursday's Security Council session, he spoke outside the chamber to the press. Well, uh, you listen to the statement of the President of the Security Council. Of course, it was short of expectation. It did not refer specifically uh, to the looming catastrophe over Rafah. And of course, there was no reference to ceasefire. But nevertheless, the effort by uh, almost 14 members of the Security Council is appreciated. Let me also just say that we listened in the debate to the briefing of uh, Christopher uh, Lockyer. It was a moving statement. It uh, uh, affected all those who listened to it, uh, whether inside the council and outside the council, and we appreciate the statements and all of the work of uh, Doctors Without Borders. And all humanitarian organizations on the ground, led by UNRWA and the brave ones, the 13,000 brave ones staff of UNRWA, which is uh, basically if not the only, the main organization that is capable of carrying the decisions and resolutions of the Security Council and the international community to transfer humanitarian assistance to every corner inside the Gaza Strip, north, south, east, and west. We appreciate the work of all of these agencies led by UNRWA, which is indispensable, and it should be protected and it should be funded. Funded. Yesterday, after the veto, I said to you we will have an Arab group meeting at the level of ambassadors, which we did. And we came to the conclusions after 140 days in which a single member in the Security Council refused to uh, accept the call of hundreds of millions in the streets in every corner of the globe and almost all members of the Security Council other than that one and the huge number in the General Assembly and beyond. Therefore, what we discussed, business as usual is not going to be the order of the day for us moving forward. And also bearing in mind the uh, the decision by the Israeli Knesset a day or two days ago by 99 members denying the Palestinian people their natural and legal right of statehood as part of exercising self-determination in which not Israel, not anyone will deal with that issue except the Palestinian people themselves in exercising part of their uh, right to self-determination. It's only us, the Palestinian people, who will determine our right to self-determination, including the independence of our state. We will not negotiate that principle with anyone, and we will not ask for permission from anyone to do so. We will not be the exception to the rule. All nations that exercise their right to self-determination to put an end to colonialism, uh, did it only alone without asking for permission from anyone or negotiating that principle with anyone. It goes back even all the way to 1776 when the 13 colonies decided to become independent. They did not negotiate that with the colonial power England, nor they asked for permission from them. As it was done by the United States, it will be done by the Palestinian people likewise. But having all these things in mind, we will expedite the process of one in the General Assembly of taking, asking the international community to take practical measures to force Israel and those who shielding it 
to stop the fighting immediately. Practical measures such as, but not uh, only that, to ask countries not to send or sell weapons and ammunition to Israel, to ask countries not to give visas to the settlers' communities and the settlers, not only for settlers to have sanctions, uh, uh, sanctions against them, and other measures that I am not at liberty to uh, share with you now in the General Assembly, but there will be a host of practical measures that we will start advocating for them. And when we legislate soon in the General Assembly, a new resolution, it will contain, beside calling for a ceasefire, these practical measures. Because the occupying authority that is defying everyone, defying international law, defying the ICJ by refusing to implement the provisional measures that the ICJ asked for, the six of them, then that country that behaves in that manner should face consequences in the international community, including in the General Assembly. In the Security Council, the resolution in the Knesset of two days ago should be rejected in practical way, and we will begin the process of marching to the Security Council for the admission of the State of Palestine. It was the international community that decided to create two states in Palestine since 1947. It is the duty of the international community, along with the Palestinian people, to complete that exercise by admitting the State of Palestine to membership. We began the discussions of such steps. We will intensify these discussions, and we will use a variety of things, including we might have a statement and solicit signature from member states welcoming and, and uh, supporting the admission of the State of Palestine to membership before, in fact, going to the Security Council and to submit a resolution calling for recommendation to admit the State of Palestine to the uh, membership of the United Nations. In the General Assembly, most likely we will hear a debate in the Security Council soon about why a, a veto was casted. And also, in the same time, we will be uh, uh, mobilizing for the practical measures that should be adopted. And then when we move to the point of resuming that 10th emergency session and producing a resolution, it will contain some of the element of what was vetoed but the practical measures also will be reflected in them. Now we are entering a different stage than the 140 40 days, going to the Security Council veto, going to the resumed session and voting on the same resolution. And Israel and who is shielding, shielding Israel are not changing the course. Perhaps these, this different uh, approach might increase the pressure on them and to force them to accept to have a ceasefire in place before this looming catastrophe over Rafah from happening. We were hoping that the Security Council in that press release or statement that they read to you, that to include the position that was reflected unanimously inside the chamber of warning Israel from not taking steps in the direction of Rafah to be included in that press statement. Unfortunately, it was not. We regret that. But nevertheless, we have to do what we should do. It is different than what we've been doing so far in order to save Rafah from that looming catastrophe and in order to have a ceasefire in place immediately because only ceasefire would allow for all these things to happen. Thank you. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBoer.